Hey, welcome to Air Shores Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Please, please subscribe to this channel. Give me the thumbs up. YouTube has been shadow banning me for over a couple years now since I had two strikes. They just don't like this channel and the truth bombs I drop about what's going on. So they've been shadow banning me for quite some time and I would appreciate your help. When we sold our uh, house we lived in for almost 30 years, we moved to a much smaller community, and I'm talking total population of maybe, maybe 1,500 out in the proverbial Amish country. Never in my life did I expect to run into Karens. And these people are truly upside down and demented in your thinking, and I had the unfortunate run in with not one but two Karens and it was just absolutely breathtaking the the amount of stupidity these people just think of and it just flows right out of their mouth without even batting an eye and I'll give you an example two examples first one when we bought this house I wanted a fenced in backyard for privacy and to keep our dogs inside and allow them to run. And I like my, my privacy and I mind my own business. Well, I hired a company, paid for the fence, hired a company to install it. And uh, the next door neighbor lady, who I do not know, never met her, never talked to her. Uh, I had a pleasant conversation with her daughters, but you know, and they were high schooler or above. Uh, they seem somewhat okay. All of a sudden, this lady comes out of her house, talks to the people installing that, and tell them to stop working because they are installing the fence on her property. Now, that seemed like it might be an honest mistake, but I had the survey of the property and we were running it off the existing wooden fence on her property. The guy came up on the door, knocked, and said, uh, we have a problem. I said, what's that? Is it, what, stone underneath or something? He goes, no, your next door neighbor. I'm like, what? She's demanding we stop work and talk to you. So I went outside and I, I said, uh, is there something I can help you with? I, I understand there's a problem. And right off the bat, and I, and I didn't know her name, right off the bat, she says, you should have consulted me before you uh, installed this fence. And, I, and I'm like, pardon me? And she says, yeah, you should have talked to me about installing our fence and running it up to uh, the corner of my wooden fence. Now we're talking maybe 10 square feet of uh, making an L shape. And I'm, I'm saying, wait a minute, I should have consulted you first. And she goes, yeah, you're installing it on my property. And I said, I beg to differ. I said, I have a survey here showing your fence is actually two feet, two and a half feet into my property line, as well as your garage was built over on my property. And I wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to cause an issue about it. I did check with the survey company. I did check with the real estate company, the mortgage company. And before I got a permit, they approved it. And I told her, I said, first off, your fence is on my property. I have the survey. It's been approved by at least four different people before we paid for and installed this fence. And she goes, you're wrong and you should have checked with me. And I said, I said, just a second. So I went inside, got the survey, showed her the property line, and that she is over on my property. And yet, that did not register with her. She said, well, we should have talked about this first. And I'm looking at her, and I said, just a second, talked about what? I said, this is my property, your fence is on my property, and I'm installing a privacy fence approved by the city council, I have the permit, and why should I talk to you about anything when I paid for the, the fence, I paid for the permits, 
I paid for the survey. I didn't need to talk to you about anything that I do on my property for privacy. I mind my own business. And she goes, well, I just want you to feel that we could talk about anything and installing this fence wasn't a really good idea. And, and I'm listening to her and I'm like, are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? This is my property. You are in the wrong. And I said, if you want to persist in this conversation and holding up the labor, we're going to have, we're going to do this. First off, one of us is right and one of us is wrong. I just bought this house so I could go back to the survey company and say, are you sure you're absolutely correct? You've been here four years and never said anything. So one of us is right, one of us is wrong. And if I'm correct, here's what I'm going to do because you wanted to raise an issue. I'm going to sue you to destroy your fence, move it back three feet, and then I will install a temporary fence and then recontract to add another 100 feet of fencing on my property. Now, do you have the money to do that. If not, I would end this conversation now, be quiet, mind your own business, leave the fence up when, it, when it's too old to stand up, then we can talk about property lines and getting it correct. But in the meantime, there's no harm, no foul. I wasn't gonna cause an argument. But now you come to me and demand me check with you on putting up a fence on my own property? I, I literally had to walk away. And I said, conversation is done. Since that time, we have not spoken, which is fine with me. Yesterday, the second Karen made her appearance. And it was just, again, breathtaking, the stupidity that these women have, the absolute arrogance is unbelievable. We were, I park out in the middle of nowhere at the local grocery store because we had Nubs and Pups. Nubs is a male Cane Corso, very protective. Pups is a female German Shepherd, very protective. And I deliberately park out in the middle where nobody else is at. And I walk inside the grocery store to do a quick shop. And the dogs are for the Sandys, the Mrs. Protection. She is totally confident in sitting inside the car without any fear of anybody doing anything. And that's the purpose of those dogs, for protection, home and outside. We had the windows up, air conditioning on, and everybody was minding their own business. And so when I walk out with the grocery cart full of groceries, I notice this red-headed woman in a green dress giving me the stink eye, acting ugly. And we, I loaded up the groceries in the back of the truck and she was parked right next to me with her husband in his truck. So I was being polite, waiting for her to get in her car. No, you get in your own car. You have vicious dogs. And I'm reporting you to the manager of the grocery store for having vicious dogs in your car. And pardon me? So they woofed at you, you got scared, you confronted Sandy while I was in the grocery store, which I did not know you'd, you'd done, and you went inside the grocery store to complain to the store manager that I had two vicious dogs inside my truck that did not harm you, did not attack you, barked at you, the windows were up and I parked out in the middle of nowhere and the parking lot filled up and you decided to park right next to me. And because you got scared, you're reporting that we have vicious dogs in the car. What is wrong with you? They didn't harm you. They didn't bite you. They didn't attack you. They let you know that you're inside the six foot circle of protection and better not try anything. But this is the absolute idiocy of these carrots. And she gave me the filthiest look. And her husband said, come on, get in the car. And she goes, I'm waiting. And I'm like, what? Oh, fine. You want to wait? I'll get in the truck first and we'll drive off and mind our own business. 
This lady was so hateful, so enraged. I thought, boy, this is what we're going to be looking to looking at in the future. And under Tim Waltz, the governor of Minnesota, the snitch line, encouraging the Karens to call the government to rat people out during COVID who were outside playing basketball, sitting on their porch, minding their own business because he had the he had the he had the nerve to lock down everybody. He encouraged Karens to call the hotline to report them to the government. This is what we're coming to. These are the people who will be your problem when the SHTF happens. These are the people that will rat you out because you have food, because you're a prepper, because you have medical supplies, because you have self-defense weapons. These Karens are going to be the new socialist spies and how they help control the population. Be on the alert for these people. And do not, do not under any circumstances back away from them. If you are in the right, you keep your, you keep your calm and you hit them with logic that absolutely stuns them because you're smarter than they are. When you confront these people saying, I'm on my property doing my own business and you're trespassing on my property and trying to tell me what to do. You may have to repeat it about a half a dozen times like I do. But once it sinks in that these people are truly stupid, they just turn around and walk away, huff and puff and, and not talk to you again, which is a blessing. When these people say, you got a vicious dog in your car with the windows up and the air conditioning on and one of the owners is sitting with them, but they're going to report you anyway, go ahead. You're the one that's going to look like a fool, and I'm going to come home, unpack the groceries, and have a nice meal. But these are the people that will rat you out in an SHTF. These are the people that will ingratiate themselves with the local government, the state government, and the federal government, and end up moving up the power chain and being so dictatorship-like, you can't help but hate them. Right now, I'm not to that point, but that's my two run-ins with two Karens in a population under 1,500 a year. Who would have thought it? Thank you for liking and subscribing to Airy Shores Prepping. Please get yourself right with God. Ask for forgiveness for your sins and get baptized submerged in water in the name of Jesus Christ so he can help you get past these Karens because he's going to have to give you the patience of Job. Greg out.